Okay, so, um, so what we want to do with this survey study, so um, when uh, Potowski came, she's like, the first thing you need to do, dirty and quick, it's a survey. We want to identify the students' strength and weakness in Spanish communication in order to design curriculum that better served this population uh, for our program. Given that program has only one section of heritage Spanish um, that has all levels of heritage uh, speakers in the class, our program is urgently in need of a structure that is more responsive to the needs of the heritage uh, speakers of Spanish. So, um, and so what are our questions? What is our student population? We want to find out who are they. What is the heritage student population in our program? What are the proficiency levels of those students? We want to know also what are the, their attitudes towards Spanish. And based on these questions, we created the survey. So uh, what we want to do now, before we go on to the survey and tell you a little bit about how we did this, we want to talk about your challenges, your obstacles. So if you look at activity eight in your, um, in your handout, uh, we want to, if you can sit with people who are in, um, or if you, you already establish a communication or something, but if you are with uh, also colleagues that work in the same level of college or high schools or where you work, it's, it might be more helpful. Uh, so briefly, describe your program, your current program, and how... Uh, and tell us about your students, okay? And the second part, you're going to fill out the chart about your students, fellow teachers, and administration in two parts, okay? Okay, vamos a ver, vamos a ver. Obstáculos. <laughs> students, vamos a comenzar con los estudiantes. Sí. Okay, so what did you guys put? For, for students, I mean, assuming you guys have all just sort of described your own institutional situations and your programs and, your, and, your, and something about your students. Uh, student, what were the obstacles for some of your students, right? So I have about 15 uh, fourth semester options for L2 students this coming fall. And that's an off semester, right? Yeah, we actually have more in the spring. And we only have one. 2304 section. So yeah, I mean that's a that's a huge one. Okay. Yeah, as as language instructors, we we have a really hard time separating our separating ourselves from the face-to-face -face experience. We don't want to give that time away. Um, and so online, you know, which her for heritage speakers it might be a good option for heritage speakers where it might not be for L2. So how many folks uh, also have uh, if you're at a university maybe also doing Portuguese? So um, we, uh, we're designing a Portuguese uh, class online um, for heritage speakers of Spanish or Portuguese. Um, okay, uh, what are some of the, but let's talk about some of the opportunities. What are some of the opportunities uh, and advantages that heritage speakers have? This was the thing that when I was, and I've, I probably mentioned this to people um, over the course of the, the day as I've had conversations, but I mean, when I was an undergraduate, I always envied my fellow students who were heritage speakers. Like, ah, your, your, your pronunciation is so awesome, you know? You know? And, and so to me, it was always a, an opportunity. I saw it as an advantage. Um, um, my students every semester say the same thing, safe space, a space where they feel comfortable, where they can share and they don't have to try to fit because they fit right in. And I think that's the beauty of these programs. It might be difficult to think of opportunities when you're thinking of administration, but, but we were just chatting about how 
Well, actually, if you, ha if you happen to be in a Hispanic serving institution or an institution that's on the, like ours that might be, you know, uh, on a trajectory towards becoming a Hispanic serving institution, you can use the administration, you know, to convince uh, resistant faculty, perhaps. Um, so, you know, it's an, it's an obstacle and an opportunity at the same time. One of the, and one of the slides that I put up had a, the quotation from uh, uh, the recent book on Spanish curriculum uh, by Brown and uh, Thompson. And, uh, and it, it talked a little bit about one of the, one of the issues that we have a, as a profession is uh, in Spanish departments, we tend to fetishize the foreign, right? So, um, and, you know, and, th and this is natural because we, you know, we travel to these places, we really like them, uh, we want to bring that excitement and that passion, you know, to our students. Um, but, you know, in our, we might be sending ec uh, implicit messages um, to our heritage speakers that their Spanish is less prestigious, you know, than the Spanish from Chile or the Spanish from Nicaragua or the Spanish from Spain or Mexico, etc. So, um, so that's a. Th this is a, a among faculty. Get, um, uh, I've talked to a lot of folks to you know say, hey, you know, just just so you realize. Um, this might be going on. Um, and so we're really proud of the diversity that we have in our faculty of people from different countries. Um, but that, um, you know, plays really well uh, for administration um, or uh, outside of the university. But for heritage speakers, that might be intimidating. Like, I don't know if I want to take a class from, you know, El Colombiano or la, Nica la Nicaragüense, right? La Nica. <laughs> um, and, you know, because that, I don't know, my Spanish isn't good enough for that. So, so those, those are obstacles um, that our faculty, uh, convincing our faculty to be welcoming and what are the implicit messages they're sending, what are the explicit messages that they're sending. Wow, what, thank you. One of the reasons we have, uh, probably have higher enrollments in the fall than in the, in the spring in our course is precisely because I go to um, freshman orientation every June and I get to talk to students when they're with their families at academic open house. So before they've separated from their families for the first time, you know, I put in that plug, you know, hey, if I see the, sp the, the parents speaking Spanish and I can speak to the parents in Spanish, you know, hey, eh, que tomen el examen de placement y tenemos una clase, ¿no? Para hablantes de herencia.